this must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Thank you very much, viewers. To analog or to lock down depends on conditions on the ground. Part of the conditions in some of the countries in Africa have not improved to a level that you could think of total open up of space, hotels, schools, airports, and other activities, games. It is therefore too early for people of Africa and especially in Kenya to agitate for an opener. Opening up space when we cannot be disciplined ourselves, when we cannot respect social distancing, when we cannot adhere to hand washing, when we cannot adhere to wearing masks, is a disaster that will happen if conditions are relaxed. I believe governments in Africa can work together to see comparatively what it, each country has done to reduce the numbers of deaths, to increase the numbers of those who have recovered and to flatten the curves. We should work at flattening the curves until there are signs of flattening the curves, until the curves show a tendency of reducing lockups and other restrictions must be enhanced in order to keep ourselves alive. It is therefore upon the citizens of any country in Africa to look at the guidelines that the governments are giving. Lock up, wash your hands, stay at home, keep a distance, wear masks, report where possible any symptoms that could lead to community reproduction of the disease. Until those things are adhered to, it is very early to call for complete open up of space. Thank you. must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.
A very good morning to you and uh, thank you so much uh, for watching us uh, today. We are going to look at uh, youth affairs. Uh, this is a show because we know in this time during the COVID-19, uh, youth have been affected in so many ways in terms of losing their jobs, uh, there's losing their, you know, a lot of things have been happening and we've seen levels of stress and depression going up in the population that is uh, within the people who are considered to be youth, not just in Kenya, but across the world. My name is Miriam Agutu and with me uh, to advance uh, this conversation is uh, Meshak Odede, the chairperson of volunteer involving organizations societies of Kenya and uh, Patrick Mpambe, our main man from the radio uh, station and Daniel Wesonga uh, who is um, one of us here in Punchline Africa. Uh, so uh, Mesha Kodede, good morning. Good morning Miriam. And uh, I know you, perhaps you could tell us a bit about your organization where, which you chair. Yeah, like you have said, my name is Mesha Kodede. I'm chairing an umbrella body, or some people call it a network of member organizations. These are organizations involving volunteers. That's why we are called VIO Society Kenya. I'm a volunteer involving organization Society Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, our members are like United Nations volunteers, Kenya Red Cross, Ungana Young Friends of Amref, Progressive Volunteers. We are many. We are about 40 organizations. In the country. All right. Well, so that, that's a lot of a, a huge number of young people you get to deal with. So now the statistics yeah. in Kenya today, uh, Kenya says that the largest youth unemployment rate in the region, despite its gross domestic uh, product growing by 6.3 percent uh, last year, the continued emphasis on economic growth, despite high unemployment numbers, has left many youth wondering where all the wealth is, is going. And we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, you know different organizations coming up that the government has said to try to respond to this unemployment number which we've, we've seen now has gone up and we shall look at during the conversation uh, but uh, what why is it that we see the numbers uh, the economy of kenya of course before even the covid 19 came was said to be growing uh, last year it was said to have grown by 6.3 percent but the youth the number uh, the level of unemployment still continues where is the disconnect yeah, uh, according to me, the disconnect is uh, at, at the legislation level, if I may say so, uh, because in, in, in the past two or three parliaments, uh, I mean, we haven't seen much that is geared towards the youth, even though the legislators, the country, the leadership understands and knows that youth are the majority. But if you go to the decision-making table, you find very few youth in those tables. So it means if you are not there, we don't really think we can think about you too much. And then the other thing, uh, I think unemployment, especially on the youth, will again be attributed to uh, the, the, the focus that the country has, has been having for the past 10 years or 20. If we are not in manufacturing, then how do we create those jobs? Because basically government don't create jobs. Government only create policies that are enabling uh, other, other, other parties like private sector, corporate organizations to create those jobs. But we haven't seen that happening much. So probably that is where the disconnect. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Great. Now, um, Daniel, 80% of unemployed Kenyans are below 35 years of age there. What does this translate to? Of course, uh, this is uh, from those statistics. Uh, it really uh, portrays a crisis. This is a time bomb that we are sitting on because uh, I believe that uh, youths are the leaders of tomorrow. And, uh, you know, they cannot be leaders of tomorrow if they lack capacity, if they lack uh, means to uh, put a coin into their pockets. So it's something, it's, it's a contentious issue that uh, need to be really addressed. And as uh, Mr. Mesha Kodede has said there, uh, the government needs to put up infrastructure, it needs to put up policies and uh, the capacity building to ensure that uh, uh, the private sector has a, a conducive environment to come in, to chip in and set up uh, industries and uh, that will be able to offer employment uh, opportunities to this younger generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Patrick, responding to the same yes. question, yes. 
Yes, uh, uh, thank you so much for linking up uh, this conversation. And of course, uh, everyone here on this panel or any Kenyan knows very well that uh, uh, many people have been uh, uh, have lost jobs, especially uh, to a tune of 500,000 and over, of course, uh, during this pandemic. But very important is to find the solution uh, for this particular problem. And uh, here, the solution is saving lives and uh, supporting lively, uh, livelihoods uh, and in these prime times. And how can, uh, can livelihoods be supported? We can either mobilize cash uh, to keep people in the jobs and also keep the businesses running because most of these businesses and uh, informal jobs have uh, employed uh, a large percentage of, uh, of youths. Uh -huh. So it's very important to look at how we can support these businesses uh, uh, to, to, to at least to, to rise again after having those challenges that they're having right now. All right, thank you so much. So, Meshek, you mentioned that perhaps the disconnect could be that a lot of policymakers who are there to formulate some of these policies that touch on the youth, majority of them are not the young people. But we've also seen in the past, uh, you know, uh, President Huru Kenyatta especially tried to bring a couple of young, people's, or, or young people on board to try to have them there represented. But we've also seen uh, from the mega scandals that have been happening in this country, if you can go back to the NHIF, that is still something that is still in court. And, uh, yeah. you know, well, well President Huru Kenyatta, uh, you know, uh, I think elected or nominated or appointed, sorry, uh, is it Moody yeah. Awori to a certain uh, position that has to deal with yeah. young people. And I remember it was quite an uproar in this country and people wondered why are we having uh, this person of this age come here and uh, uh, lead an organization that has to touch on the youth. Why can we not bring uh, young people to deal with that? And uh, the response from uh, the president was, you know, a lot of young people have been given that opportunity, but also these young people that have been given this opportunity they're the ones who are now spearheading in terms of the loot. They want to catch up and very, get rich very quickly. What do you have to say uh, to yeah, that? Yeah, mm -hmm. Miriam, it is true. I, I was I was alive when that was happening and how <laughs> youths were making a lot of noise about it. Yes. But the truth is, we we yes, we, we could say the government or uh, the leadership at this point in time have not done enough for what we ought to have seen them do. Mm -hmm. But again, like you have said, young people are also having a portion of this blame on themselves because a few who are already in, in front representing young people are not giving the country hope that really young people can do this, they are up to it. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, when it was really very bad to see that the scandals are coming out of the dockets that are held by young people. Even as we speak today, there are members of parliament who are young, but probably they are not giving the country any other different uh, perspective than what is already mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Because we, 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 are, we are all bind up in, in one basket and, and anybody trying to run out of it is, is not even, it's, it's not even making young people see uh, any hope because young people want to see you behind Uhuru Kenyatta Young people want to see you behind Raila Odinga. Young people do not want to see you alone or trying to give something new. Mm -hmm. So like, like you have said, uh, I think as much as we are going to push the government or the leadership to do more, we are also going to have to uh, get, get young people uh, to work on themselves mm -hmm. other than somebody mm -hmm. trying to work on you as a young man. All right. I think very, very interesting there uh, that you brought. I don't know, the, the panel, what would you respond in regards to what Meshak there has said? Because he's saying, okay, fine, we had uh, one of our own, you know, a lot of young people given a certain positions there, but they did not live to the expectations of uh, the youth in this country. They went there and, uh, of course, they found an opportunity to perhaps enrich themselves and to pursue personal interests there and did not necessarily go there to represent the voice of the young people in this, uh, in, in the country. And I think the youth and the women normally, uh, I think when we advance, uh, you know, uh, the, the interest of these groups, uh, sometimes it's, it can be very emotive. We saw in parliament there, uh, you know, for us to meet the gender rule. Right now, we don't meet that in parliament. We don't have that. The two thirds, it's not met. And the question was, do we just need more women in parliament or do we need enough 
women or enough people there who will actually advance these policies because even after having the 47 uh, you know as our our, our constitutions uh, constitution requires 47 uh, women representatives and all of this so that we're able to at least get a good number of women in parliament but still we haven't seen the policies touching on women even with the number that we have which is not too bad uh, we need more but still it, it's such a an improvement uh, from where we were a couple of years ago but we've still not seen the the you know the issues touching on women being advanced even with the women we have in parliament so even with the youth now brings brings us to the question do we just need more people in leadership positions or do we need just enough who have uh, the mind and the vision of the young people in this country does numbers matter in this regard um, yes. Miriam, if I may respond to uh, that particular question, uh, you find that with as much as uh, this leadership normally goes to the parliament, you elect them there, but uh, actually they don't push the agenda of the people they are going to represent. Most of them don't push the, this agenda. Instead, they push their own personal agenda. You see, this is what now comes to their mind. And uh, this is where uh, the youth themselves will have to at least start now looking for the way to salvage themselves, or even women, they, all the types of gender. Uh, they'll have to salvage themselves through maybe uh, self-employment, uh, going for self-employment. And then the self-employment, self it will also require that at least the government supports them uh, with income uh, scheme, an income scheme that will help them to stand in this particular. Because we don't, nowadays, uh, mainstream employment is actually uh, so small, it is so squeezed in such a way that you cannot really uh, maybe be in uh, public offices, all of us together. So self-employment will help. Because and, and, we shall, and, we, and, and Patrick, we shall, we shall get to that. I think we're, we're heading there. But my question was, uh, we've seen a number of young people being uh, you know, given uh, this job, be, being appointed to these very important uh, spaces there where they are supposed to be advancing the interests of the young people. But we've not seen them do that. Uh, so now breaks the question, Meshek and uh, Daniel. Does numbers matter? Do we need as more youth as possible in there, uh, in the policy making tables, or do we need just enough who have the mind and the mission and the you know and the and the ambition uh, to advance the policies and the things that will benefit the young people in this country? Do ma numbers matter in, when it comes to uh, policy making uh, representing the youth? Yeah, Miriam. Uh I, I think there is, there is one thing or one point, according to me, that we are missing as a country. Uh, trying to bring uh, many young people and many women in parliament sometimes is not going to get us to achieve what we want to achieve. Okay. Look at this parliament and the number of women that are there and the number of youth that are there, and we still couldn't pass the affirmative action bill. Uh, and, and if you take the women in NASA and women in Jubilee and put them together, they have the numbers they need, plus the men who are supporting that bill. If all of them were together in it, uh, adding to the numbers of men who are supporting that bill, I think we wouldn't be having a problem. So sometimes numbers, for the sake of it, will not help us as a country. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I want you to direct your thinking to the leadership of those parties. How much are they supporting women agenda and youth agenda? Because apparently if the top is not supporting, if the head is not supporting, it doesn't matter how many women are there in are parliament they? or how many young people are All in right. parliament. Okay, thank um, you. I want to ask yourself <laughs> a, a big question. If the, the data has always had it that women are more in population and youth are also more in population, mm -hmm. then how the hell did they find themselves in minority groups such that <laughs> when it is election, it is yes. them who gets nominated and then the rest have been elected? I've how never. did we find ourselves there? That arithmetic has yes. been very difficult for me to fathom. I, 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 Daniel, what do you say to that? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, the talk of of, of uh, youth em empowerment as well as uh, women empowerment has been uh, so great uh, in uh, in writing. But uh, when it comes to practical, it has been uh, really been not adding up. So to me, I think numbers uh, really don't matter. 
but it is the resolve to advocate uh, for these uh, uh, policies that are really matters. You remember when uh, Fidel Castro and uh, his comrade uh, Che Guevara were spearheading the Cuban revolution, Fidel Castro later Ron came to say that uh, if I had to start this revolution once more, I, uh, uh, rather he said I started the revolution with the 82 men, but if I had to do it again, I'll start with 15, but with a more uh, bigger spirit mm -hmm. and more resolve to mm -hmm. win this. So that is what we need in this uh, uh, legislation to, for youth empowerment mm -hmm. and also women empowerment. We don't need so many people who go there to champion their own agenda and uh, maybe uh, benefit themselves. We need a few people who can uh, do this vehemently and uh, with a great resolve to uh, bring uh, some uh, results on the table. That is on my perspective on that. All right. Uh, thank you. So, of course, the response of uh, uh, the government uh, to respond to this uh, problem of unemployment, because you, the youth, we account for a huge population in this country. And we've seen that in the when it comes to the number of people who are unemployed, youth we, we, between the ages up to 35, we account to 80% of that uh, mathematics there. That is not good at all. That means a lot of our young people are not employed. Uh, so to respond to this and uh, to, the, for the, uh, to respond to the number of unemployment in this country, uh, the government has over the last few years invested billions of shillings in programs, uh, funds and different trainings to support the youth. And one of those uh, kind of uh, programs include Kazi Kovijana, the Youth Enterprise Development Fund and the revamped National Youth uh, Service. Has these programs really ans the answer to uh, the unemployment in this country, Meshak? Uh, I, I would really love to look at it like that, but from the reality... Uh, Things on the ground are different. It doesn't <laughs> look like that was it. Because, again, if these things were done uh, for the youth, then it would still have been there until now. But because it was done for a certain individual to get the vote, you realize today we are not talking about the NYS project anymore. Uh, just the other day, the president came out and uh, is talking about how to uh, cushion the economy and maybe uh, resurrect the, some, some, a few things that may be dead after the COVID. He's talking about putting young people on the roads to actually clean the road and, and repair whatever. Just to keep you them know, busy for now, because companies are closed, Meshach. keep them busy for now. Yes, just so for it's now. It's really yes. not something that young people are going to drive this economy. At a long it's time. Like, it's like we are driving this economy, but we can't allow young people to be loitering around. So we have to get something to keep them busy. Mm -hmm. So the, the, NY, the NYS project, the youth fund and all that, was, was made to look fancy for the youth, to see that uh, there's something for us, but in, in reality, there was nothing for the youth in that thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so a briefing on world's economic situation and prospects in 2019 by the United Nations states that young people are twice as li likely to be unemployed compared uh, to adults. Is it time that we retired? A lot of these civil servants you see sitting in these offices who can't even type anything in the computers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe that will be one of the solutions. <laughs> there is a very that, that is a very dangerous ground to trade on. To trade on, I know. Uh, be, yeah, because because even as we speak right now, uh, the government uh, considers extending even uh, uh, retirement age for some of these people mm -hmm. because of the experience. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is because we cannot retire all the experience once at a go. That would be dangerous for the economy. We, we bring in everybody new. Yes. Actually, as, as a politician, I can tell you for sure that uh, this is the problem that Jubilee had. They retired everybody who had been running government before and brought in everybody new with no information and no experience, and you can see the mess we found ourselves mm -hmm. in. So, so, so it has yes. to be really balanced and mm -hmm. mixed. All right. So, Daniel, we need the experience. Yes. But how are you going to create uh, space for the young people also to come in and start getting that experience? 
I think uh, for the young people, really, you know, uh, for maybe people who are in the employment sector in the 90s and the people who are in the employment sector from uh, 2000 coming forward, I think they no, don't have uh, the same kind of experience. You know, with the onset of uh, information technology, it uh, requires that young people be more innovative and uh, they bring in new skills. So it is really these new skills that uh, will be able to create a niche for young people to uh, join uh, this elusive uh, employment sector. So my call, I think, uh, to the government and uh, the young people as well is to government to create a capacity to ensure that uh, these young people are trained enough, they have enough efficiency. When you look at countries like Malaysia, uh, countries in, uh, in the Middle East, uh, like uh, Singapore, you know, uh, China, yeah, most of young people are working in these uh, uh, companies that assemble uh, that, that assemble uh, uh, IT related uh, devices, and uh, this is because the governments uh, have offered uh, some preconditions to ensure that these people get enough training efficiency, so that uh, uh, the cost of labor also is lower in those countries. So these are traps uh, investors like uh, my, uh, HP, uh, Microsoft, and all that bringing uh, their companies back to those countries, of course, creating employment for the young people. So that is some kind of uh, capacity building that should be done in this country mm -hmm. to ensure that our young people are efficient and are well equipped with the knowledge in that particular, in those uh, and such like a particular fields. And uh, also to make sure that they can uh, be able to offer their labor at a lower cost. So th those are just uh, some of the preconditions that are I believe could help uh, lower unemployment uh, rates in the country. Okay, so. th thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So, so Patrick, what you've heard uh, Daniel and Meshak say, uh, especially Meshak, what he said there, we need the experience so we cannot retire everybody because we need them to be there so that they're able to share the experience still needed in the workforce. But how can we balance between having just enough experience but also creating space to ensure also young people are able? Because I'm tired of hearing. Of course, I'm, I don't, I'm not in the bracket of youth anymore. Can you believe that? Like I'm older <laughs> right now. But I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. Young people, I'm sure, are tired of hearing, you know, we are the leaders of tomorrow. How about you start training us so that by the time now you are supposed to go home, we have more young people there uh, with the experience and the knowledge and the skill that is required to still ensure that uh, we keep going as a country. Uh, Patrick, how can we strike this very delicate balance? Uh, actually, uh, Miriam, I understand uh, that uh, human brain uh, can be manipulated to do different things. And uh, that's why people uh, go to school. And when they go to school, uh, they normally don't have that uh, knowledge uh, prior. And they acquire it perhaps in school and those skills, wherever they're training. So these youth can be, young people can be trained to have those skills that those people who are already working in government institutions, wherever, uh, have. And they, they acquire that particular skill. So I would even suggest as I differ with uh, uh, my two colleagues here, Wesonga and uh, Meshak, uh, that it is better those who are in government offices or uh, in offices should retire at least at 40 uh, to pave way for... Uh, to retire, uh, young people uh, to, to sorry, in. to retire yes. at what yes, age? They retire, and they, they are given pension. No, they sorry, go home, then to, re we bring to retire, in what, what is the my, age, the, Patrick? Yeah. Sorry, hold, just hold uh, on. What is the age then yes. that you have suggested that people are supposed to retire? Uh, 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 I've suggested that this age of 40. Uh, yeah, so, so you're that, telling me uh, I have, four, four, I have four, four years and then I'll... Patrick, be, Patrick, I, 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 believe, I, I believe... <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I, th I think we, we'll be creating a problem me? by trying to solve another problem by doing so. Yeah. Uh, so hey, they're given pension, yes. others can come in. Yes. Once they come in, they also, they work maybe up to, up to a certain period of time, then... So, so, so let, me, let, let me paint for your picture. picture. Let, let me paint for your picture and perhaps where your idea might have a problem. Because we mm. have certain uh, professions that actually go to school longer, like a doctor. You go to school for a couple of years, and then after that, if you want to specialize, you still have to go add up. So by the time you really are stable and starting to work for real, for real, you're nearing the age of 40. I tell you. True. So what are you saying yeah. for the people who have uh, put themselves through uh, the school, who have gone there to, to acquire the education, then by the time now they're starting to work, you're telling them, no, you're too old, go home. Are we not so, uh, so creating another uh, crisis or are we trying to solve the problem? I, I think by doing that, by doing that uh, when you can uh, implement what I've just said, 
uh, it will mean that uh, maybe those courses that normally take long uh, to be completed, like uh, the ones you have already mentioned there, uh, those people can uh, be attached somewhere and then they be paid as interns. And then that can be added to the years that they will uh, start years, working. Then 14 years in retire. school as a doctor and as a specialist. And you're telling me I'd be taken somewhere as an intern. Meshak, please help me because my head is about to not understand this. Miriam, let me tell you something. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Y yes, let me say something. Uh, uh, my brother is speaking really like a youth advocate, which I don't have a problem with. Yes. We need to really advocate. But uh, the truth is uh, we need these elderly people to pass these skills. And the only way to pass the skills is to pair them together, to work together for a certain time. So someone who has reached 40 and is going to retire uh, probably at 60, need to work alongside young people for another 10 years or so, so but that by the time they leave, because government have got ladders, you climb the ladders according to the experience you're gaining as you continue working. So we need to pair them. But there, there is one thing we need to take care of uh, as, a, as a country right now. If we take this whole thing to the law, sometimes it doesn't work for us so much because when you take it to the law, like uh, you saw, you saw the 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 ADPO, uh, access to government uh, procurement for young people. You know, all older people are trying to keep that law, and nobody is breaking that law. The only thing is they are breaking the moral law now. They they leave the written law and they go to the moral law. So they bring young people up front. They register the companies in their names, uh, bank accounts in their names, and then they get those jobs that are meant for young people. And then because young people do not even have the capital, the older people do them those jobs, and the law is not broken. But the moral law is completely broken. So sometimes we do not want to think that putting it in the written law will safeguard young people so much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, there will be moral aspect, which, of, of course, there, there won't be a moral police here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, to me, the solution is young people need to look at the, the situation around and jump into those tables uninvited and make sure that when they jump into those tables where decisions are made, they are also having contributions that are worth listening to. Okay. All right. So they should they should not uh, very wait to, to, to be invited. They should come on the table no and, come, and come with their seats in, because there will be no seats for them. Exactly. They will come, yes. come with their seats so that you can have with. a seat. Yes, and, and say something. Uh, uh, Miriam, do Miriam, do you think, Miriam, do you yes. think right now from where I sit, uh, I can simply walk into ODM, my party, and unseat my party leader by virtue of his age and just say, because he is 70, <laughs> Uh, plus, he just need to go home because I am forty. You, or you will, you will go. You will go before there. he does. Yes, absolutely. We're so glad you Miriam, say yes. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, the, uh, I, I think I hold the same views as uh, my brother Meshak uh, about uh, that. Uh, the youth need to uh, create their own niche. They they need to to struggle. You know, there, there's no there's no way in the world you'll have such kind of uh, helicopter transformation where you you are just dragged from this point to a higher point without struggling. They have to really fight for their space. And uh, there's a saying that says that uh, in Africa, every morning, a gazelle wakes up in the morning uh, knowing that uh, it has to uh, run as much as possible to outshine, to, outshine, to outrun. It has to be fast enough to outrun the slowest lion, uh, the fastest lion. And uh, a lion also have to wake up in the morning, knowing that it has to be fast enough to outrun the slowest gazelle, lest uh, it will be it will go hungry. So it doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. The point is you have to run to keep running. So young people need to be on their toes. They need to fight for their space and uh, create 
a, 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 a place uh, on the table by themselves. All right. So, and, and, and by creating, a, yes, and by creating a, a, a place on the table for themselves and coming with their own seeds, uh, we see a report released by the Kenya Bureau, uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics in 2018 revealed uh, that nine out of 10 uh, unemployed Kenyans are 35 years and below. Uh, I don't know, one of you could pick this question. Uh, is it time perhaps we stopped looking at just going to school and having the knowledge and getting an office in a corner somewhere with a nice view outside? Or perhaps now we should switch our heads or our minds towards perhaps I could, you know, be self-employed and we, we, can we now, uh, self-employment, can it be an answer to this high number of unemployment in the country? Any of you could pick that? Uh, uh, Miriam, Miriam, actually, and that's why uh, the government realized that and uh, has uh, recently introduced CBC, remember competence-based uh, curriculum that is going to support uh, that particular initiative, whereby at least as you acquire skills from, uh, uh, from school, uh, you can actually work towards whatever you have, you have sharpened yourself in. And that is very, very important. But in this particular uh, case also, to be very important for, for young people also to identify uh, the fact that uh, there's this thing uh, that the government brought in place, the youth fund. Let me just emphasize on that, although Meshak has already uh, talked about that. Let me ask, how many uh, youth know even the process of accessing the youth fund? It's That's serious. a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, many do not know how. So the, it will be very, very important also to try several things. Like when the government brings such initiative, they try that. And then we have uh, uh, maybe things to do with the uh, online jobs. A lot of uh, jobs right now uh, happen or have been brought about by the fact that we have uh, internet and online services. So people can uh, practice on how to do the copywriting. Uh, people can uh, even teach online uh, translation. So. Yes. Not that, that, is, Patrick, on, that is Patrick. That is with the assumption that everybody has internet and, and mobile phone and computers, yeah, yeah, but which, which is not the reality. The, the Google loan balloons is just reason to support. That is for me uh, and you wide, over wide here. Coverage, yes, but the yes. people. Uh, the truth is that I'm a lot of youth who are not. I don't have the luxury of having a phone or having access to internet uh, down there in the villages. So we, while we talk, we have to uh, completely look at that and see. Okay, fine. So this might work for this youth in this. Setting, but how? What about a bigger population? Even the youth here in Nairobi, or even in the city, in the slums, for example. I think let, afford, let us talk yes. of those uh, who are able to. And I'm those sure. Who are able to, but yes. we have to be comprehensive. So, Meshak, self-employment yes. could it be the solution and the answer to the high level of unemployment? Uh, among yeah. the youth? Yes, Miriam. I, I I want to agree with you on that a hundred percent. Two things very quickly. You know, uh, like we. On, on, on social matters, uh, uh, people are told that uh, six pack, I, I know you have seen online thing about the six pack guys, and, and the same way with ladies beauty. Six pack, handsomeness, beauty can only take you some far. So far, but, yes. Yeah, but on the table, somebody needs a different thing mm -hmm. or maybe an additional thing. But what, is wrong? Way, but what is wrong with yeah. six packs now that yeah. you're talking? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing wrong with six packs. Can't you not but have both? Is, no, but <laughs> li listen to me. If it is the only thing I'm bringing on the table, that marriage will not hold. That all that is I have is six pack. Absolutely. If beauty is all you're bringing on the table, for you're... that marriage will not hold. True. So you should also realize that not the, the not the papers, not the degrees that that we are having being the only thing we are bringing on the table. When we come to the table, we need to bring more than the degree because even those older people have those degrees, uh -huh. you know. So what is the extra thing we are bringing? And that is where I would agree with you. Uh -huh. Let us bring something extra uh -huh. uh, like what we have done for ourselves uh -huh. that tells or tells our story differently, that young people have become more innovative mm -hmm. than just papers. Because in Africa, they say it is degrees really, really needed when you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And then when you have it, no, uh, not, they want the no one needs it anymore again. True. So I, I think even, even the technology sector, 
these are places where we could beat the older generation hands down. But how many of young people are using technology, including things like social media? People, young people are online 24 hours. But at the end of the day, when they go to sleep, can somebody account for those bundles that this is what I've made out of it at the end of the day? It was for chats. It was for going live. You know, like this COVID-19, people are just going live even if they are doing nothing. Right. So I think young yes. people have opportunities that mm -hmm. they have lost. Mm -hmm. Although we are not saying older people have done their best. Older people have not done their best, but young people have just seen opportunity passing. Daniel, so I think self-employment yes. yes. is going to be the real, real thing. But connecting it to the pandemic period, I think young people are going to see a big blow than the older people because young people are having 70% of the micro small enterprises mm -hmm. and COVID-19 has completely wiped out micro small enterprises. Mm -hmm. So it is like going to begin afresh, completely mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. But all the people are somewhere above the bar. Some mm -hmm. of them are holding on even though the times are difficult, but you will realize that in that stimulus package, they are going to reinvent themselves and get back more easier than young people who are running very small low level business and for the for the for the much older people maybe because of the experience the experience is very important daniel can you account for the bundles you use online at 24 hours are you able to account yes <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, of course, perhaps for me now, I use um, a lot of it to do research. And mm -hmm. of course, yes. I read a lot of uh, uh, positive thing on business, investment, and also social political uh, matters. And okay. uh, I tend to agree strongly with my brother, Mesha Kodede, because when you look at uh, innovation, innovation has been the long missing uh, ingredient in the soup of uh, helping youth to uh, get jobs and a uh, way of income, making uh, some income. And I do have, Miriam, I do have friends who who do business, who sell uh, shoes, who sell uh, suits, who sell uh, uh, a lot of things online, and they do not own a shop. All they do is go to social media, advertise the kind of good they are selling, and uh, put their numbers there so that uh, they'll do the delivery. They don't have to rent a shop anywhere in town. and. Uh, they are doing quite well in uh, in in selling uh, their commodities online. So, really, our young people have to think out of the box. Also, on matter of uh, maybe papers, you know, I have so many friends who are employed in uh, uh, blue chip companies with with no uh, papers. Some some have not even gone beyond uh, college. But whatever whatever skill they have is uh, how they are able to think ahead of the pack. There are people with uh, very sharp intellects, and uh, that is what uh, most of uh, these big employers are looking for. So, if you if you if you if you're talking about degrees and all that that kind of thing, then uh, yes. I think sometimes yeah, the young people miss the point. You know, and, uh, they yes. don't have only to base that on uh, education. Rather innovation and uh, their, and their way of thinking. And it's it's important that that you, you you both brought up education, and I would like for us to take a short break. But before we do that, uh, education, uh, our education levels and their impact. And Meshak, you mentioned there uh, that uh, when you go to a job uh, interview, you're told, "No, we need your educational papers," and then you go get them. Now, when you come back, no, we need your experience. So you can never win in terms of of that in in in, in, in the job market. So education levels and their impact on the youth to access opportunities. Are youth taking the right courses in the especially in the higher education uh, you know sectors like the universities <laughs> and colleges and uh, how relevant uh, is it today when it comes to the job market the education that we're having and then let's answer that and then we can take a break and have doc uh, join us the education <laughs> Nataka kusema kwamba hii ugonjwa wa coronavirus ni ugonjwa ambao uko na unashika kila mtu ambaye anaweza kuwa in contact na mtu mwingine ambaye ako nao ama amegusa kitu ambacho kimeguswa na mtu ambaye ako nayo. Let us wash our hands. Let us keep the social distance given at least one meter away from one another. Let us avoid all gatherings unnecessary gatherings. People believe that sanitizer is the main thing to fight the sky. Let us just use the soap we have at home. 
even the, the bar soaps. So long as we maintain the cleanliness that is required, we are going to fight this. Ili tubambane na yu ugonjwa, ni lasima unawe. Iyo ndiyo sababu kama sekta, tumeweka hizi mtungi kila mahali ya kunawisa mkono. Na tena tunasema ya kwamba ukua unafanya kasi hapa, ama wewe ni customer, ama wewe ni mpitajia, ukikuja lasima unawe. Iyo ndiyo kusaidia na ndiyo kukinga hii ugonjwa. Hii mitugi ya kunawi ya mikono, mebasi wetu walichukua jukumu, wanategeneza hizi mitugi na wanausa kwa bei na fuu. Kwa sababu, wanapo tegeneza hii mitugi, sio biyashara tuwe ama pesa tunatavuta. Tunatavuta kwa ba hii mitugi weze kufikia mutu, kila mutu, diyo watu waweze kunawa mikono na waweze kujikiga na hii ugojwa. Si serikali habayo inaweza kutisaidia peke yake. Ni sisi wenyewe pia, tusaidiane kwa kwa. For more information, please dial 719 or star 719 hash. You will get help immediately from the relevant authorities, particularly from the Minister of Health. Pamoja to Komese, Corona. Anybody who has been in the military will understand that when at war, in war, with war, you don't court, court martial your soldiers or officers while the war is on. You finish the war first and then investigate the officers or soldiers who might have misbehaved or neglected duty. This is the doctrine of the institution of war. Today, Kenya is within the war and at war with an invisible enemy called COVID-19. And we must support the efforts of the frontline officials. Then we put them on trial later if there are mistakes. Remember, the country is at the weakest link now and we cannot afford to deflect the efforts of those soldiers on the front line of fighting COVID-19. Thank you very much, viewers. That is me. My name is Sophie Mwanyumba from the Minister of Health and are working under National Public Health Labs. Today we are visiting the quarantine sites within Nairobi and the teams are being dispatched out to go and visit the sites. We have the forms which we are going to use to capture the, the information of the visitors who, are, who, have come, who came from in the country. And we also have the sample collection uh, apparatus which we have the oropharyngeal swabs and the nasal swabs. The nasal swabs and each person is supposed to be taken the two samples, the nasal swab and the oropharyngeal sub. We have our PPEs to protect ourselves. We have the safety gears where we are having this and the disinfection for disinfecting the apparatus which we are going to use. The waste, we have the biohazard bags where we are going to put all the waste which is generated within the site where we are collecting the displacement. We have the biohazard bags to, to safeguard the environment. And with us, we have the transport media because we have to make sure that the, the samples which we are going to carry, they are via the if the, the virus is there, they are viable, they are viable, so we have the transport media which we are carrying with us. And the temper we are maintaining the cold chain because we have the cool box which is in equipped with the ice packs to maintain the cold chain of the of the virus as of the samples as we come back. To my fellow Kenyans, I have a word for you today. Kindly stay at home. I am at work to safeguard the environment and to, to uh, safeguard ourselves. The corona is real, it is real with us. So please let us stay at home as the health workers continue working and supporting the government or the guidelines which they have been put on place. I am Brenda Cheritich. Now I'm 26 years old. So um, I was the first patient to be confirmed with COVID-19 which is Iondio disease caused by coronavirus. So I came out myself to the 
I came out to the Ministry of Health and I let them know that I was concerned because uh, I was I had shown symptoms of COVID-19. Now, kuna mtu alini nobody, akuna mtu alini pressure like go forward. Ni mimi tu niliamua as a responsible Kenyan ni fanye as in ni yone as in juni kazi yangu as a responsible Kenyan kukuja mbele na kuambia government I think this is what is happening and you might have to test me na niko happy because waliamua kuni take seriously wakani test and that's when wakapata niko positive so after wakani pata niko positive wali ni pair treatment wali ni support sana and I'm just niko very thankful to all of them for what they did kitu natuka kuwa show ni kuwa Iki tu ni manageable na ni treatable. If you think you have it, don't be afraid. Usi usi ogope ati watu watasema nini or that ati watu watani stigmatize. Iyo ni kitu tu. Those iyo ni kitu. It's something that ni normal. It happens to anyone. And unaweza contract. It doesn't matter. Unaweza kwa young, you can contract it. You can also be a child and you can be an older person. Ikitu ni ya anyone. It doesn't discriminate. I discriminate based on age, ati weni, how many years, or gender, ama ethnicity. Ikitu ni ya kila mtu. But because we are really trying to fight the coronavirus, ni, it's also part of your responsibility. Kama mkenya, ukwe responsible na ukuje out with your story. Because meona me ni ko confident with my story, right? Sija ugopa anything. So that's what I would like to tell you guys. Now, because kuna najwa kuna patients say wana receive treatment and they may wana is a little overwhelmed. Najwa, it's normal. It happens to every patient. Natukatu kuambia stay strong because the doctors wana do what they are doing. Una is afkiria, they don't know, but you they know what they are doing. They're constantly wako talking on video conferences, on phones, na experts from other parts of the world. Unafatu kuwa trust and be positive. And thank you to everyone, Minyameni, support through this journey. And also for... The CS PIM were very supportive, and I would just like to tell anyone who mm -hmm. stigmatize anyone, don't kabisa air eh, and be strong. So I want to tell you Welcome back. My name is Miriam Ogutu and in case you're joining us today, we're looking at youth affairs and the impact of COVID-19 on the youth and employment. And uh, it's not just now that COVID-19 has made youth unemployed, but you know, unemployment is something that uh, governments across the world has been grappling with, especially the unemployment among the youth. So COVID-19 has just added insult to a very bad injury already that, uh, you know, um, existed before so in my panel today we are talking with the chairperson of volunteer involving organization society of kenya mr meshak odede uh, together with patrick mpambe our radio man here at patchland africa tv and also daniel wesonga who is one of my colleagues here at patchland africa so just before we went uh, to the break uh, meshak we were looking at the question of our education system here in the country does it address are we equipped enough when we go to the job market the skills we get from our education system? Miriam, the, the truth is, uh, for a long time, our education has not been addressing our issues as Africa and as a country. Our education has always been a copy and paste, uh, probably from the West. And uh, the better percentage, again, has been uh, something that you're not passionate about so you, when you're not passionate about something, you don't go extra into innovations and, and even research to find out even to better it. Our education has been, if I am growing up in this village X and uh, uh, Miriam is working with a television station and uh, perhaps she's earning good money, my parents are taking me towards that direction that you can see the daughter of so and so is doing well. I want you to do journalism. And, and inside me, there is no journalism. So even when I qualify uh, with good papers from university, I am not going to go any extra. I am not going to give my employer and even the viewers and the country any extra thing. So I'm just going to make numbers in journalism and we are going to write in university uh, 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 data that we have graduated these thousands in this course and we're also going to add numbers outside there but not really 
something that can push me extra. So that is why I was saying I got so mad to realize that we have a graduate who is sleeping under the bridge with chokoras or street children simply because at home everybody is waiting for him to graduate, get a good job, and pay rent and other, other things that we need as a family. But on the other hand, in Nairobi, the gentleman cannot find a job. But the big question is, how can you have a brain which is only able to get A from secondary to university? Because according to the, the, the news anchor, every, every, every paper that guy had was an A. Uh -huh. So how do your brain only get A on paper and cannot invent anything? While, while Once you are out of the books, you cannot invent anything. So that clearly tells that we have not had an education in Kenya mm -hmm. or Africa rather that is is gearing towards making anything better for Africa or for taking our needs seriously. All right, Daniel, what do you say to that? Yeah, I think I tend to agree strongly. And uh, uh, recently I was reading uh, some joke where a pupil was sitting for an exam and uh, it was all... Uh, uh, maybe uh, he was carrying uh, this particular uh, bowl of milk while it was this particular in uh, this particular temperature, and uh, he, they took it into the house, uh, maybe measuring this particular amount of temperature. So the, he, the the pupil was being told to calculate the difference in temperature. But remember, this pupil was reading a book uh, that has had been uh, had been uh, was was uh, maybe. Uh, Oh, how, how do you call it, that had originated from uh, abroad, from uh, the U.S. curriculum. So, you know, this kind of pupil who is in Trukana and uh, reading uh, material that have come from the U.S., you know, trying to relate the, the conditions there, it becomes really a big problem. And that's why we do need uh, to develop our own uh, curriculum that really resonates with the kind of uh, conditions that we have and uh, also the kind of life that we live so that uh, our pupils and uh, students are able to learn on how to uh, handle the situations back at home okay. rather than being educated. You, you find that uh, uh, when I was in high school, I have, uh, I have uh, the former colleagues who pursued uh, mechanical engineering. But when it comes to Kenya, they cannot find a job. I, 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 I bumped into one and he's selling cars at the moment. They, they are not doing anything related to that. So really, we but, need to But cars, cars is related. Uh, perhaps when I go there to get a car, <clears throat> you know, he will be in a very good position to explain to me the engine and all that and how that works. So I think he's, he's just in line <laughs> with his passion. I don't but, know. But, but, I but, but, but really, Miriam, Miriam uh, okay, it's, it, it's, it is in line, but, uh, you know, that, that kind of, it, it shows some kind of, uh, you know, wastage in terms of intellectualism mm -hmm. because, you know, He's not in uh, his real, real where his heart was like uh, for studying. I have a cousin also who did uh, law, but uh, he uh, she was so much into architecture. And uh, the moment she fin she graduated with law, uh, she took the degree and uh, placed it on the table and told the parents, "Now you have your law degree there. Now I'm going to do architecture." So I think uh, we really need to teach our children at a very early age to focus on what their interests lie, where they, they, they really want to pursue their career path. So rather than imposing a, this curriculum and uh, uh, whatever yes. maybe career lines that uh, the parents want them to follow. All right, uh, Patrick, uh, do we have uh, misplaced uh, <clears throat> passions in, in very wrong places? Uh, Miriam, actually, that's a very good question. And um, there's this mentality of when I grow up, I want to become this and this and this and this. I think we used to be told that until it uh, sank in our heads, in as much as uh, maybe we were growing up again, uh, when we, we could miss that particular opportunity, then we think that we are we are done. That's the mentality that is killing many uh, many uh, many young people. Whereby, when maybe you wanted to be an engineer, you grow up perhaps in class four. Uh, class uh, maybe form four. So when you grow up and maybe you train to be an engineer. If you miss that particular opportunity, then you think that your life is done. Uh, so that mentality should also be erased away in the minds of uh, young people. 
All right, I see that uh, Dr. David Matsanga has joined us there. Uh, doctor, we've been looking at uh, this perennial problem. We know COVID-19 has just made it worse, but unemployment is something that has been with us here for a very long time. And even a report <laughs> that uh, was made uh, in um, last year said that 80% of unemployed Kenyans are below 35 years of, uh, of age. So that is a problem uh, that we have been grappling with. But now uh, we've been looking at uh, our education system. Is it, is it preparing us for life or is just uh, preparing us for the A's and B's and all that, but you're not able to use that in terms of uh, being creative and uh, being owners? Are we only taught to just go and get employed, but we are not taught to go and own something, go and start something? Where is the disconnect, uh, doctor? Thank you very much, <clears throat> the panel. And I want to welcome my brother there, that this is the place where you belong. And every time belong here, Thank every you, Friday, Mr. I want you to stay here. We want William. to talk about, yes, we want to talk about this. Yes. <laughs> William, yes. when you talk about the preparation, mm -hmm. yeah. the education these days is preparing us to suicide. Yes. Suicide. Mm -hmm. what, <laughs> what are you telling me that the people are being told what? Where Songa is being prepared for suicide. Oh no, not the Songa. <laughs> yes, Songa. Uh, all of you, the yes. younger generation, are being prepared for suicide. Why would you say that, Doc? None of you knows any other activity other than coming wearing a tie and coming to town to Nairobi to look for a job. I was prepared to cook, to become a cook. You have seen me do cooking on Saturday. That yeah. can be a, job, a very serious. When I went, let me give you an example. I've yeah. been listening to your conversation in the first phase. Yeah. When I went to London, yeah. I became a cook. Yeah. I cooked. In fact, I opened three restaurants and a nightclub. Yeah. Because I was told how that in case you fail, yeah. you can also use this. Yes. But the type of education these days, the panel, is education preparing you for suicide. Yeah. In a kutupa after university, so yeah. what? Yeah. After university, so what? That's Let's look at our youth today. Yeah. How many of you can collect five iron sheet, five iron boxes, yeah. and create from form an organization? Yeah, you can iron cloth from your house and earn a living of ten shillings per shirt yeah. or five shillings per shirt. Yeah. If you start the Indian way, the Indian yeah. way, how India has developed, how Singapore how this man here quotes a lot of things of Singapore, Mr. Yeah. Wesonga. Yeah. That the Singapore, they removed the hawkers and put them in a, a very bad, created a town for them. But yeah. the hawkers today man the world because they're innovative. Yeah. But the youth of today, you are not innovative. They did sink back home. Yeah. You are not. And this idea has grown up up to now. And it is reaching an explosion. Yeah. Under COVID-19, people are asking, what do we do? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Some of them who have married have gone home. Yeah. They can't have even food. They can't prepare food on their own. Yeah. They start harassing their partners. You get the problem. You are in police. You end up your career, you break. Let's look for something. Let's create the youth who can do something apart from looking for white collar jobs. Mm -hmm. And and uh, uh, employment. So yes. yes. So my I don't know whether yes. I, I have I've, I've, yeah, I've I, touched the raw womb. I, yeah, I, mean, I just want to. The raw wound of Mr. You, uh, yes, and Meshach, Meshach seems to be strongly agreeing with uh, what you're saying, Doctor. So you're saying yes. we have been prepared for, for suicide. And I saw you there saying, yes, indeed. Why do you think so? Yeah. 
Yes. And, and Miriam, I just want to ask Dr. one thing. Yes. Uh, how about this thinking in Africa that everything must be put in the law, thinking that the law can save the situation other than uh, what you are saying? Because we think if we want to get young people to, to be uh, economically stronger, we want to put everything in the law, everything in the law. And then at the end of the day, we come again and abuse those laws, and then young people are at the same position where they were. The laws protect pseudo-capitalists. Yes. And if you wait for the laws, you are dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. The laws <laughs> protect the pseudo-capitalists. Yes. And by the way, in Africa, there is no middle class. Yeah. Where is the middle class? There is there is a class that steals from the rich and yes. that steals from the poor. You call that the middle class. <laughs> so if you don't struggle in the middle there, yes, in this squeezed, squeezed yeah. narrow street of Italy, of yeah. Rome, of Emperor Nero, mm -hmm. you know, you know yeah. why Emperor Nero banned the city of Rome. Yeah. Because yeah. he found the streets were very narrow. Yes. I don't know whether you, uh, so that you are getting it now. You yeah, must yeah, yeah. yourself in the road, in the, in the, in those streets of Rome. Yes. There's nothing that even the Corona went to Rome first. <laughs> Miriam, allow me to ask that very one thing. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Meshek. Yes. Go ahead. Now, now. The most, I have been waiting for you because yes. I in many places. I no, like you to be on this program every no, Friday. I look for I, him. So, Meshek, you're asking doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. I will be coming, but before I come, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now that young people would be looking at people like you as a role model, Yes. what, what do you want to tell a young man somewhere who thinks, uh, just like the story of given you in London, who thinks they cannot make it until they go to London as well? What do you want to tell them? Because they think <laughs> that you went to London and made it. So we no. cannot make it in Africa. We must go to London and then come back and be like that. That's a, that's what a do good you want question. to tell that young man? Do we have green that's pastures a, here? Yes, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My circumstances of arriving in London are uncoordinated for government. Very yeah. dangerous. The way I ended there is not in my liking. Yes. Because of the prostitution, the political yeah. inequalities of the narrow streets of Rome back in my country. The times the are different now. Down, and some of us were thrown out. So, so you are saying uh, you are yes. saying the times are different now and Africa is at a but, better place. But then then yeah. you younger people must first raise what do you want? Yeah. What do you want? Yes. Because when Songa wants to be the chairman of KPLOC, sure. Yes. <laughs> you want to be a chairman of KPLOC? Yes, when he gets experience. <laughs> don't even know how to make a final cabinet. Yes. Yes, let's talk the truth. You want to be the chairman of Kenya Power you, to be appointed, but you don't know how you conduct a meeting. Yeah, yeah. There is one thing that I learned, and mm. I want to, did, to give it to you. You are in charge of the youth, and I like. Yeah. Look at this. In 1978, in motion, yeah. I was very young, and we went for a meeting quickly. Mm. We went for a meeting for the formation of the new government of Uganda. Again, the city, I mean. There is one word I learned from one person, and that person is called Professor Edward Rukumayo. Yes. You go to Uganda most of the time, he's still alive. Yeah. The man is said the youth must have positive neutrality. Yeah. From that day, mm -hmm. this thing has been here. You ask me how I survived without a, a, a big marker here. Of, a panga cutting me halfway. Because mm -hmm. you become positive neutrality. You can criticize, but come back and analyze yeah. and speak and await. But yeah. when you have youth today, 
wanting to become a chairman of Kenya Power when it is a meeting for three three times in a year. Yeah. Where you earn, apart from, I think you earn 20,000 per sitting. Yeah. What does it, it help to other youth? Instead mm -hmm. of the youth going for chief accountant. Yeah. Accounts clerk. Yeah. Where I am here, I've been an accounts clerk. Yeah. I was earning 623 shillings in 1975. Yeah. In Kampala, in a place mm -hmm. called Fine Art Printers. Yeah. My my uncle put me there. I earned 623 Uganda shillings under Idi Amin while preparing my way to, to fight Idi Amin and go away. So yeah. I have seen this experience of youth. I've been a youth leader. This man you see here. I've been a youth leader, leading over 10 million youth to 20. And I've known the problems of youth. One of them is ambition. If you are so ambitious, yeah. you can break it. For example, I had you talk something about parties, political parties, so that I leave a million to conduct political parties. That some, there are some youths now yeah. Who, who want to come to wrestle ODM from Raila Odinga? Yeah. How will you wrestle when you don't even know how to conduct an interview? Impossible. How? <laughs> you want to go and wrestle ODM from Raila Odinga when you don't Impossible. even know how to speak? Yeah. Some of them, when you give them five people, they start sweating. Say they don't know how to speak. <laughs> so prepare yourselves first. Yeah. Raila Odinga. Uru Kenyatta, the rest will go. Yeah. But yourselves, you don't come to destroy. You don't want to hate Raila today because yeah. he's old. Yeah. Or Uru Kenyatta because he's old. Yeah. You must learn from Raila what he did for this country. Yes. He's one of the most injured people. Yeah. Among us, all these lumpens. I agree. Very injured. In opposition, yeah, he has been injured. I have been with him in in, in, in trenches in the eighties, nineties. Yeah, before he came back, he left me in the trench. I'm still in the trenches. <laughs> Dr. Ari, are you still in the trenches? <laughs> yes, I am still, in, uh, boss. I am still in the trenches fighting. <laughs> no, One I day, don't think so. <laughs> hoping, hoping. Hoping that one day salvation will rise from the, the mountains. Yes. And the I can side. see light also. Across the, so, across the bridge. <laughs> across the bridge, yes. I'm in trenches. <laughs> Just okay. I'm, another, I'm in very serious trenches, but we have been there. We, we learned from Raida. Yes. We were weary. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we were all tamaking in London. Yes. In New York, uh, in, yeah. in, in Stockholm, in Denmark. In all these Scandinavian countries, Paris, yes, we have had meetings with those people. That's why you see Oguambo does yeah. not ever insult Matangi. He knows yeah. me, yeah, as a youth. <laughs> At times, I am the one who has hit him so hard, but he never insults me. I know, I, I know. I've been meeting. watching. Huh? <laughs> he has never. He has, and he will never, because right. we okay. suffer the lot. <laughs> So when you have youths who are coming, they want to take over quickly. Yeah. yeah? Then you do what? You want to, you know, we have experience in Africa of political problems. Yes. In Liberia. Yeah. The youngest man took over power, yeah. assassinated the president, the wife, and everybody. Yeah. What happened when he was being killed? You saw I was begging for mercy. Yeah, yeah. By the same, the same men he used to, he told them to kill Topman. Yeah. Because then the Topman was killed by Sergeant Du, the yes. youth. Yes. How many youths have disappointed us in Africa? So many. Look at Kabira. Yeah. From nowhere, we propelled him with Mugabe. I, Mugabe, and Mugabe, Nagagwa. We airlifted him to go. Yeah. We had to keep the body of his father in Harare. Yeah. I was there. 
Really? You have to keep <laughs> the body of Kabila in Harare for some days. Why don't we install this young man in Kabila? When yeah. he went to ERC Congo, he's yeah. a youth. He started looting. Yeah. So when you talk about this youth, please, employment, 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 yeah. So what is what is the as as we conclude now? What is the bottom line? The bottom line is first equip yourself with tools of analysis. Tools of analysis. Education is one of them. It's a tool of analysis because we are going for us. We are sunset. We are finished. I, Rahim, and the rest. We are going. Even this router will go. He's also uh, uh, heading towards 60. He, he is not... actually gone. Yeah. Dr. Harry, yeah. he is actually gone. <laughs> we, need, we need to leave. He is our vice president. Yes, for now. Yes. We need, we need to leave you people who yes. can run enterprises. Yeah. Who can give somebody somewhere small employment. As much as we people, elders, should not stick to everything. But yeah. we need to see the responsible people coming up so that we can give you space. But if you are not, you are irresponsible. You yeah. won't be given any work. I brought, finally, Miriam, I brought that thing of creating small enterprises, medium, SMEs, mm -hmm. and so forth. Small called. and medium, yes. Yes, if you create a club for ironing cloth, there are so many lesser people in Uganda who want to throw that. They don't want to touch water. I'm running quickly to work. Or maybe and they're busy. Put, maybe they're just busy. Yes. No, okay, fine. Maybe I'm always in defense. Of them. They are busy. They are what? Yes. I mean, we have a problem here. You can iron cloth for five shillings. After one year, with your friends, these are Indians have come here, and they came and bought the Horongara and the Pakalans mm. at about 200 shillings, 420,000. Yeah. Got the money. Do you know their plots nowadays how much? Mm -hmm. If you want to buy a protein backlands now, the Indian is even telling you, you bring the money. Shall we go away? You know, yeah. he can go away and now pay, buy 10 houses yeah. out of the protein backlands. Mm. We Africans have a disease. Yeah. We don't invest in our future. Yeah. We get into short term. Even you, even with Songa, even a, a Patrick, if you give Patrick 10 million shillings now, the first thing he's going to buy is a Range Rover. <laughs> hey, that, that's our weakness. Ah. <laughs> yeah. and we need, with 10 million, he's going to hire a warehouse and bring some homo and other things and start sitting there every morning. It's all right. Be, Pay and take wholesale, wholesale within six months. The warehouse has turned into a huge area where cars come to take goods and is making his profit. Yeah, we don't have the youth of today and most of the Africans don't have innovative minds. Yeah, okay, let me also come to the elders to balance. Yeah. We also sit on you too much. Mm. For example, why should Mr. Koinange come to go and work for citizens? Yeah. He should have come to create a television station. Yeah. To create, to employ 50 people. Yeah. That's it. Are you not here? Are we not earning a living? Yeah. Even if it's not too big, yeah. we are earning a smaller living. Why yeah. should you come and then squeeze these boys? 
Yeah, exactly. You are also yeah. reading news like a driver or Bija. No. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Dr. Beshek yes. said there earlier that the experience is still needed from yeah. the, from the older people. If you yeah. find me, if you find me, my sister doing that, yeah, guess me. Yeah. So, Miriam, Miriam, yes. Yes. for me, the the bottom line is here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, winding it up, the, the youth need to learn from footballers. You know, the coach is not going to teach you everything. The coach is going to give you some dynamics, uh, some, 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 I mean, just the general overview. The coach is going to learn the other team and share with you what they look like. But when you're on the pitch, the coach is not going to tell you what to do when the other player is attacking you with the ball. You are going to have to be innovative enough and even to create chances to score goals. So young people are basically going to learn uh, from older people, and they are not going to teach you everything. The government is only going to create uh, policies which will ena give enabling environment either for businesses to thrive or for small, medium enterprises to come up and grow to a certain length. But they are not going to give you the nitty gritties and the details on how to grow your company. Mm -hmm. And yes, I agree with that. We, we young people are not just going to knock doors and tell general managers and CEOs to vacate because we are young and we want to sit on those chairs. We are going to show by the small things, like Dr. Tari says, the small things that we began at home or in our little offices that has grown. That is going to show the other generation that it is time for us to leave because we can see young men have become so innovative and they are ready to run this company from this chair now. But it is never going to be from a word. It is going to be from an action. If Dr. Tari is going to see uh, another young man there, becoming better and better, then Dr. Tari is going to begin to vacate slowly by slowly, knowing that I have generals who can sit in this chair and run this special. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you there, uh, uh, Meshek. And, uh, Daniel. And, 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 and Miriam, to add on, you see, I am not a man who wants two terms. I only want 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> if I was given a chance to lead a country, 24 hours, and I am gone. Yes. Because I have already, I am not in the studio. Yeah. But Miriam is controlling the studio. Yeah. That is the life. Yes. We social, want people can social distancing. Function. Doctor, yes, we need the bottom yes. line from, from Daniel. <laughs> and, and the other yes, one. Because we have another show coming. Yes. Daniel, 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 Daniel will come in. Yes. But that Daniel style, <laughs> there is one aspect before Miriam give two minutes. Yes. <laughs> My brother here is with the youth. Mm -hmm. There are these youth who tie their shorts, their trousers in the knees. Yeah. You know? I know them. <laughs> how, how are you going to be given a job? You come to yeah. my place with the trousers and the nose. It, who will give you? How can you be a CEO with a trousers on your knees? <laughs> now, another thing that we need to Miriam in the future, some of you can also help us, brother, but, yes. bring but, but, our topics so that we can arrange them. Yes, we will. Uh, Doctor, future. yes, yes. We, Look we at do this. That. I went to London. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I went to France. I, I think Miriam will understand why I don't eat garlic. I reached there. The, the room was well set. Yeah. And yeah. when you're going for these jobs, prepare yourself. There are yeah. some things you do. There are some things you should not do. Never eat garlic when yeah. you are going for an interview. Yeah. You, those guys might not like it. Mm. And indeed, I scored about 87.7 marks. I was number two. Mm. And the reason they failed me, not because the people judging me were Bazungu, or there were three Bazungu and four Blacks. 
These four blacks, friends, they failed me. Because I came in with garlic and the room was too small. The interview became unmanageable. <laughs> so this is a real, ex I, I am telling you. That's so, why you're supposed to have mint in your pocket, doctor. You're always have, supposed to have ah, mint in your pocket. I did not know because yeah. you are writing from a train. You eat fast before. So you eat then a lot jump, of garlic, yes. In a time. Uh, yes. I didn't know William. Yes. I entered the room. <laughs> the garlic failed me. Poor so one of the problems that the youth who want employment so much. You're not prepared enough. Always prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Always don't go to this office. With one caller upstairs, yeah. I want to go. I have got three master's degree. Nobody yeah. will give. All right, Thank Daniel, you. at the bottom line. Yes, uh, Miriam, uh, I think I tend to agree strongly with both uh, Dr. Matsanga, uh, Mr. Mesha Kodede, and uh, my brother Mpambe Mkanga, and of course your views too, Miriam. And I would like to part it short uh, with a story, uh, pre-colonial in the pre-colonial period. Story? Please keep this story oh, short. It, it, yeah, quite <laughs> brief. You know, uh, a pre-colonial chief had called a meeting and uh, the community went for the meeting. And uh, this is a little boy who stood against a very energetic young person. And he looked unto him and uh, he asked his father, uh, Dad, who is this uh, gigantic guy here? Is he the village chief? Uh, the father said, no. Is he the uh, village elder? He said, no. Is it a uh, father to anybody? Uh, the dad said no, and the young man, uh, the young boy, told the father, "What a waste!" So that is the perspective our youth should look upon themselves. They do have a lot of potential. They do have a lot of opportunities around them. Mm -hmm. So if they do not protect these uh, opportunities around them, then they have themselves to blame. And uh, the question, uh, the, the question will will always be, "What a waste!" When you have all these and you can never turn around to make it to your benefit. Very well said. Thank you, there, Patrick. Please uh, keep it short. You last uh, uh, party uh, short. Of course, we all of us we know that uh, the youth make uh, a number of uh, almost 9.5 million people uh, in Kenya, and therefore my parting shot uh, will be uh, for them just to work hard and uh, be innovative and future oriented for right. them to succeed in life. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Meshak Odede, the chairperson, volunteer involving Organization Society of Kenya, uh, Patrick Mpambe, our main man in the radio station, uh, Daniel Wesonga, one of our colleagues here, an investigative journalist here, and of course, the man himself, uh, Dr. Uh, David Matsanga. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, uh, for your time, and hopefully we can have this uh, conversation again next uh, week. Uh, for me, Miriam Ogutu, it is bye-bye for now. I, I would like... must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. <laughs>